Thank you, Terry. Um, I think Dre has brought up some very, very interesting points, and I think one of them that you need to take away today is that this is, to have a firm foundation moving forward with a, a nomination dossier, you need a lot, a lot of work. It's something that takes time that you just cannot do um, overnight. My presentation is looking at what happens when you present the dossier. And uh, I'd just like to say to all of you that it's going to be further down the road when you need to uh, think about this, but this talk is available uh, to you individually whenever, whenever you might need it when you get to, to, to that position. I'd just like to thank Dr. Alfredo Conti, who is the chair of the ICOMOS International World Heritage uh, Panel, who has provided some of the slides for this uh, uh, talk. We're talking about the World Heritage Convention ad ad adopted in 1972, of which there are almost 190 states parties, Ireland being one of them. And through this convention, we have the World Heritage List. They're moving up towards 1,000 World Heritage properties, and three quarters of them are actual cultural heritage properties. Uh, uh, there are some mixed, and the rest then are natural. And I'm going to focus on the cultural heritage properties. And in fact, looking at the tentative list for Ireland, most of the properties on the tentative list are uh, cultural or uh, mixed. I'd just like to draw your attention to Article 5 uh, to ensure that effective and active measures are taken for the protection, conservation and presentation of the cultural and natural heritage situation situated on its territories. Each state party to this convention shall endeavour, insofar as possible and as appropriate for each country, to adopt a general policy which aims to give the cultural and natural heritage a function in the life of the community. Community is very, very important uh, for UNESCO and to integrate the protection of that uh, heritage. If you look at the strategic objectives of the World Heritage Committee, who will be the final arbiters of your nomination dossiers, these are the five Cs. And two of them, well, three of them I just refer to is communication, Communities are stakeholders. These play an integral role in the whole process. So it's a process which, as Dre says, starts from the bottom, from the local communities, works up under the direction of uh, the state party. And it's the state party then, of course, who makes the actual application. Uh, and communication is very important. For World Heritage, at the moment particularly, it's very focused on sustainable development and the role of local communities. So you have to bear this in mind in moving forward. In terms of the World Heritage Convention, and it's set out by the operational guidelines, and this is, there'll be three documents that I refer to at the very, very end, the occupational guideline, the operational guidelines being being uh, uh, the first. Um, ICOMOS is the advisor, ICOMOS International is the advisor for cultural heritage and mixed heritage, uh, mixed sites, and IUCN uh, uh, is advisor for uh, natural sites and mixed sites too. And of course, there's a third advisor, which is uh, ICROM. And ICROM is not involved quite in the day-to-day -day process uh, as IUCN and, and ICOMOS, but it's there to help with capacity building, which is very, very important. And let us not forget that Ireland is a member of ICRAM and can avail of its resources. Um, ICOMOS uh, uh, will look at the, will evaluate the nominated properties monitor the state of conservation of existing properties. It will review international assistance requests. And I just draw your attention to the fourth one, is to provide input and support for capacity building. And this is very important. And each of the national, uh, uh, each of the state parties has a national committee of ICOMOS, and you should use the national committee of ICOMOS to help with advice. The overall, if you like, framework for the evaluation procedure, once you have your nomination and it's, uh, it's sent to the UNESCO World Heritage Centre by the state party, if it's uh, cultural or mixed, it goes to ICOMOS and referred within ICOMOS Secretariat to the World Heritage Group, which is made up of the World Heritage Unit of ICOMOS and uh, experts. 
Following on from that, the dossier is sent to desk assessors and uh, to uh, also they will organize a mission. And the mission is an expert from the region, but not from not from the country itself. That isn't, isn't possible. So you, have, you may have many desk uh, assessors. That information with uh, uh, various proposals are referred back to the ICOMOS panel, which meets normally the first week of December in Paris. And to make, to make it simple, I'll, I'll go through it a little bit in more detail uh, shortly. Uh, that panel then refers the nomination to the World Heritage Committee through the World Heritage Center with a recommendation. The ICOMOS assesses the nominated properties for OUV, Outstanding Universal Value, and as Ray said, it's very, very important, the, the U in this is important. A place may be of a, ex, very, very important at a, national, at a local level, at a national level, but it must have a universal value, and you have to be able to demonstrate and show that. It must satisfy the criteria for inscription, and there are a whole range of criteria, and I'd refer you to the operational guidelines for that, and it has to have authenticity and integrity, adequate legal protection, and a satisfactory management process, which really can be all gathered together under um, a management plan. And this is a little diagram, uh, uh, courtesy of IUCN, where really the outstanding universal value is underpinned by the criteria, by the integrity and authenticity, and the protection and the management. The ICOMOS evaluation report to the World Heritage Committee is uh, based on the nomination dossier, which is what the state party will submit. The mission report, which is a very, very detailed report from an expert who will go to the site and go through the nomination and look at all the issues uh, on site. Research uh, through experts, desk assessments from experts and academics, ICOMOS International Scientific Committees. ICOMOS has many, many committees, about 28 committees, on vernacular architecture, on a whole range of, uh, of things, and uh, whatever the nomination falls under, uh, there will be people from the International Scientific Committees involved. Also partners like TIKI, which is Industrial Heritage, and Dokomomo for Modern Architecture. Um, in assessing, uh, at the World Heritage Panel in December, in assessing um, the dossiers, additional information may be requested from the state party. It can be fundamental information, but there needs to be maybe clarity or something is missing. And the state party has time up to the 28th of February to actually submit that. And the World Heritage Panel meets in March to make uh, a final decision on the va evaluation. The people involved, or the groups involved in the evaluation process are the work, World Heritage Working Group. So that, that's where your nomination starts in ICOMOS. And that's the group of officers of the World Heritage Unit, which is a dedicated unit, and their advisors. Uh, and this guides the World Heritage work. So they, if you like, process with the advisors the actual uh, nomination dossier. The World Heritage Panel, members of the executive committee and invited experts. And since being on the uh, International Committee of ECOMOS, I also sit on the World Heritage Panel. And this group prepares ECOMOS's recommendations. Uh, each member studies uh, at least two or three nominations, and at least two people will study those nominations. And not just the nominations, uh, also the responses from the experts and from the desk reviews uh, and, and, and other people involved. Um, no panel member can attend presentations of nominations of their own country, so you have to leave, leave the room when anything is discussed from your own country, and this is very, very rigorously uh, enforced. Um, also, there are a whole series of World Heritage Advisors, and they compile uh, ICOMOS evaluations, um, and they present the recommendations to the World Heritage Committee. So at the, at the very end of the day, you, you have, uh, at the World Heritage Committee uh, itself, you have three uh, advisors from ICOMOS who will be there uh, on the podium uh, to uh, present the evaluations and to answer questions. 
And there other actors involved, as I said, were the scientific committee, scientific experts, <laughs> partners such as Tiki and Dr. Momo, uh, and also experts from the region of the nominated property. Um, and the evaluation texts are the result can be the results of the work of up to 40 to 50 people. So there's a huge involvement from people and experts from around the world in this whole process. Uh, you can see from this slide that there's a number, the number of cultural and mixed nominations, and um, it varies uh, every year, dropped in 2012. But of course, no matter how many come in, uh, ICOMOS and IUCN have to respond uh, uh, to all of them. Um, just on new nominations, nominations are becoming more and more complex. Cultural landscapes, cultural roots, serial nominations, as Dre uh, uh, used in his example. Um, longer nomination dossiers, more complex protection and management systems, implication of local communities. And the local communities and stakeholders have to be involved in this process. The size of the dossier does not a large dossier does not ensure um, that you get a good evaluation. It's very, very important to have a, a, a concise and a well-presented dossier with all the information, but no excess uh, information uh, is needed. Sometimes, as Dre said, OUV is not evident. It may be incomplete, or, or uh, there may be inadequate comparative analysis, and the comparative analysis is really important in relation to looking at the outstanding universal value. And not every site has it, but you go through the process and indeed it isn't lost if it doesn't have it because uh, a, a lot can still happen to the site. Um, now, how it happens really is that the first assessments are done July to September and the, this evaluation is put together by the World Heritage uh, Unit uh, in Paris. And then at the beginning of, the, of December, the panel has a look at uh, all of these and makes initial recommendations and these uh, they, they draft the evaluation but there may need, be, need to be a dialogue so there, there is a short period of time between Christmas and the end of February when you can actually elicit clarification which may help in the evaluation process. After that when that comes back there's a final meeting of the World Heritage Working Group with a panel in March, and they put together the final evaluation proposals from ICOMOS, and they draft the final evaluation. And then in April and May, you have the editing of that, and you have the translation into the two uh, uh, working languages of, uh, of uh, the World Heritage uh, uh, Committee, uh, English and French. So the evaluation report that's presented uh, to the committee uh, is a summary of the state party nomination with the history and description, ICOMOS's assessment of the nomination covering the OUV, the protection, the conservation, and the management, and ICOMOS's conclusions and recommendations. And the recommendations are four possibilities to inscribe, to refer back, and referring back is the same nomination with amendments may be resubmitted within three years. So that actually is, may not be a very onerous task. If it's deferred, site may, uh, site may be resubmitted as a new nomination, but it goes through the process again with desk reviews and a new mission uh, to the site. Or indeed, uh, the fourth possibility is not to inscribe. Uh, and in this case, the site may not be submitted again unless under exceptional circumstances. And over the years, there have been exceptional circumstances where a site has come back. But this is not, uh, I mean, it has to be approached in a very, very different way. I'll just show you the Sycamore Evaluations checkbox tool. But basically, this is what we use on the panel for the, for the ticks to make sure everything, everything is in order, is at the right standard, and then moving from inscribe to refer to defer, and of course, uh, not, not to inscribe. Just very briefly, we're coming to the end now, uh, the selection of experts. Um, on the basis of the nature and the features of the nominated 
properties. Relevant ISCs are involved, national committees are consulted, uh, and of course you have experts to carry out, out uh, a mission or missions. And the selection of the experts is based on the candidate's background, on their experience, and normally experts must come from the region, the overall geographical region uh, of the uh, nomination, but never Okay, never from the actual uh, country itself. Uh, experts themselves uh, do not advise on the OUV. That's uh, looked at by others involved in the process. Um, but the issues that the experts look at, uh, the issues to be assessed on the site, um, are conditions of integrity, authenticity, adequacy of proposed boundaries and buffer zones, and Dre mentioned this, this is important in your process of working towards a nomination, because the boundaries, the boundaries and buffer zones will play a, a role in this, and this going back and looking at comparative studies and working at your documentation, uh, the boundaries and buffer zones are extremely important. Our two sites in Ireland, uh, we have one which is, a co which is complex, uh, uh, um, Brunabonia, where you have the complexities of People, people's lives, uh, farming, the whole, whole landscape, a whole community of people which have to be taken into consideration. The I manager of Skelly Michael, where we have the most wonderful buffer zone of the Atlantic Ocean, which makes it very, very simple, I, I, I have to say. Um, so uh, th these are important. The adequacy and the protection uh, and the management systems uh, are in place. Um, and management could say management systems is actually more used rather than management plan because at the end of the day it's the quality of the management that's in place rather than the name of what you're uh, uh, presenting and of course the state of conservation of properties one of the problems in recent years has been there have been recommendations to defer or to refer and what the the, the, the ultimate arbiters are the world heritage committee they don't have to agree with the evaluation, and very often they, they don't. Very often what happens is something that is uh, referred can be moved to inscribed, something deferred can be moved to referred by the World Heritage Committee. However, this is a problem because very often something is referred or deferred because it may not have adequate management. And of course we have sites, World Heritage sites, that were put on the list, inscribed in the list, and in two years they're in danger because they haven't everything in place. And this is a headache, and you have a whole series of uh, uh, state of conservation reports being done on sites which are sometimes only one or two years inscribed, and this really shouldn't be the case. Um, so um, I've, I've really gone through the, uh, the experts there. What I would like to do is just to refer you to three uh, uh, publications which are really very important in kind of understanding the context of the whole thing. One is the operational guidelines for the implementation of the World Heritage Convention. And you, it's a big document, but you really have to read that because in fact, this whole process that you're going through to uh, 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 present sites for nomination it's very, very important that we've thought of what's going to happen afterwards. Because, of course, you have the continued management of, of these sites. And the operational guidelines will put this whole thing uh, in context. The other thing is, for many people, what is outstanding universal value? And for a lot of people, it's hard to really grasp this. And there is a, 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 an important publication that was compiled by Yuka Yukilieto with contributions from three very well-known international people involved uh, with many years' experience, and, and Yuka Yukilieto was actually in, involved in the uh, advising of Ireland's tentative list. But this publication, really you should get through ICOMOS in Paris and, and, and read it so that you really understand what OUV is about, uh, authenticity and uh, <coughs> integrity. And this one, uh, this manual that Dre referred to, really, really important uh, from UNESCO, uh, but with the involvement, uh, put together with the involvement of IUCN, uh, uh, ICROM, and ICOMOS, preparing World Heritage nominations. This you need, really, from the very start, to see what you, what you have to do. And do remember that, 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 that this process is a bottom up process, it's, it's uh, 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 as Dre said, the, the, uh, at a government level, providing 
I don't know about funding, but providing knowledge and information and help, really, really important. But also remember, you do have a national committee of ECOMOS, ECOMOS Ireland, who is there to, to help and advise uh, and, and to help you through the process. Um, so, uh, I mean, it is possible at any stage, as you work through the process, to have this talk again more locally to as you have lots of lots and lots of questions uh, to answer thank you very much